everybody, my name is Guna Isaac Beer from Mary Challenge Lab. Today, I will be reading the unfinished memoir. Now, you don't have to say, oh, he's reading. He's reading from a script. Because, yes, I am reading. I'm reading a book. So, today, we're going to be reading the timeline. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, 1920 to 75. A political profile. 1920. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was born on 17 March 1920 in Tunjapara village under the then Gopal Gan subdivision, present district of Faridpur district. <coughs> he was the third child among four daughters and two sons of Sheikh Mutafar Rahman and Sayera Khatun. His parents used to call him Koka. Wait. <gasps> He spent his childhood in Tundipara. 1927. At the age of seven, Mujib began his schooling at Gimadanga Primary School. At nine, he was admitted to class three at Gopalgan's public school. Subsequently, he was transferred to a local missionary school. 1934. Mujib was forced to stop studying for a while at the age of 14. One of his eyes had to be operated on. 1937. Mujib returned to school after a break of four years, occasioned by the severity of the eye operation. 1938. At 18, Mujib married Begum Fazila Tunisha. They subsequently became the happy parents of two daughters, Sheikh Hasira and Sheikh Rahana and three sons, Sheikh Kama, Sheikh Jamal, and Sheikh Russell. All the sons were killed, along with their parents, on 15 August 1975. Wait... Sheikh Mujib uh, Begum Fajilla Tunisa was eight at the time he married her. It's kind of scary. <coughs> 1939. Mujib's political career was effectively inaugurated while he was a student of Gopal Gan's missionary school when he attracted the affection of Hussein Shahid Surawardi, later chief minister of Bengal and prime minister of Pakistan, <coughs> on his visit to Gopal Gan, along with A.K. Fazlul Haq, chief minister of undivided Bengal. 1940. Mujib passed the entrance for the secondary school certificate examinations, so matriculation essentially. He was admitted as an intermediate student in the art faculty of Calcutta Islamia College, <coughs> where he had lodged at Baker Hostel. The same year, he became actively involved in the movement for the creation of Pakistan. 1943. Mujib's busy and active political career took off in the literal sense with his election as a counselor of the Muslim League. 1944. Mujib took part in the conference of the all Bengal Muslim students held at Kustia, where he played a significant role. He was also elected secretary of Faridpur District Association, a Kolkata-based organization of the residents of Faridpur. 1946. Mujib was elected General Secretary of Islamia College Students Union. 1947. Mujib obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree from Islamia College under Calcutta University. When communal riots broke out in the wake of the partition of India and the birth of Pakistan, he played an active role in protecting Muslims containing the violence. 1948. Mujib took admission to the law department of Dhaka University. He founded the Muslim Students League on 4 January. He rose in spontaneous protest on 23 February when Prime Minister Kawaja Nazimuddin declared at the Legislative Assembly, the people of East Pakistan must accept Urdu as their state language. Kawaja Nazimuddin's remarks led to a storm of protest among the, across the country. 
Tick Mujib immediately plunged into hectic, act, act, hectic activities to build a strong movement against the Muslim League's move to make Urdu the only state language of Pakistan. On the 2nd of March, a meeting of the workers of different, different political parties was held to plan the course of the movement against the Muslim League on the language issue. The meeting held at Fazlul Huk Muslim Hall approved the resolution placed by Sheikh Mujib to form an all-party state language action committee. The action council called for a general strike on 11 March to register its protest against the conspiracy of the Muslim League against the Bengali language. On the 11th of March, Mujib was arrested along with some colleagues while they were holding a demonstration in front of the Secretariat building. The student community of the country became restive following his arrest. In the face of student protests, the Muslim League government was forced to release Mujib and all other student leaders on 15 March. Following his release, the All-Party State Language Action Committee held a public rally at Dhaka University Amtala Ground on the 16th of March. Mujib presided over the rally, which was soon set upon by the police. To protest the police action, he immediately announced a countrywide shooting strike on 17th March. He was arrested again on 11th of September for joining the movement against the Kordan system in Faridpur. 1949. Mujib was released from jail on the 21st of January. He extended his support to, uh, to a strike called by Class 4 employees of Dhaka University to press home their various demands. The university authorities imposed a fine on him for leading the movement of the employees. He rejected the unjust order. Mujib was arrested for staging a sit-in strike before the vice chancellor's residence. When the East Pakistan Awami Muslim League was formed on 23, the 23rd of June, he was elected as joint secretary despite his imprisonment. He was released in late June. Immediately after his release, he began organizing a movement against the prevailing food crisis. In September, he was detained for violating Section 144. However, he was later freed. He raised the demand for Chief Minister Norul Amin's resignation at a meeting of the Awami Muslim League in October. The Awami Muslim League brought out an anti-famine procession. And Doc, on the occasion of Pakistan's Prime Minister, the Akwat Ali Khan's visit to the province. Once again, Mujib was arrested and jailed for leading the demonstration. 1952. At a public meeting on 27 January, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Kawaja Nazi Mudin, announced that in terms of the declaration of Mr. M.A. Jinnah and Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Urdu would be the only state language of Pakistan. The students, youth activists, and members of the civil society immediately protested, just as they had done in 1948. Although Mujib had been incarcerated since 1949, he had managed to establish co contact with the politically active leaders and workers, and through them he ensured that an all-party state language action committee was formed. He encouraged them to observe 21 February as a state language day. At the same time, he had informed the authorities that he was determined to go on an indefinite hunger strike from 16 February in order to protest his incarceration without charge under the Public Security Act. Soon afterwards, to, uh, on the 14th of February, the authorities moved him from Dhaka, Dhaka jail and sent him to Faridpur jail. On the 21st of February, the student community violated the prohibitory order under Section 144, and they were fired upon by the police. As a result of their repressive action, wait, 21 February, on the following days, Salam, Barkat, Wafik, Jabbar, Safiur, Abdul Awal, and Ohiullah were killed and they are now recognized as martyrs of the language movement. So there were more than just Salam, Barkat, Wafiq, and Jabbar. Mujib's hunger strike continued for 13 days, and his health began to seriously deteriorate. The authorities were therefore compelled to release him from jail on tw the 28th of February, 1953.
a night on the 9th of July, Mujib was elected as the General Secretary of the East Pakistan Awami Muslim League in its council meeting. Efforts were made to build unity among among Mulana Bashani. Bashan. In this, a special council session of the party was called on 14th November, in which a resolution to form the Jukta Front was approved. Jukta Front means United Front, if you don't know. 1954. The first general elections in East Bengal were held on 10th of March. The United Front won 223 seats out of 237. The Awami League was victorious in 143 seats. Mujib won the election for the Gopalgan constituency by a margin of 13,000 votes. Defeating the influential Muslim League leader Wahidu Zaman. He took oath on 15 May as Minister for Agriculture and Forest in the new provincial government. The central government arbitrarily dismissed the United Front Ministry on the 29th of May. Mujib was once again arrested when his plane landed at Dhaka Airport from Karachi on 30th of May. He was released on the 23rd of December. That's a lot of arrest and jail time. 1955. On the 23rd of June, the Working Committee of the Awami League <coughs> took a decision that the Awami League members, the, legisl the Legislative Assembly, would resign if autonomy was not granted to East Pakistan. On the 25th of August, Mujib told the Pakistan Constituent Assembly in Karachi, <coughs> Sure, you will see that they want to use the phrase East Pakistan instead of East Bengal. We have demanded many times that you should use e uh, Bengal instead of East Pakistan. The world, well, the word Bengal has a history and a tradition of its own. You can change it only after the people have been consulted. If you want to change it, we have to go back to Bengal and ask them whether they are ready to accept it. So far as the question is one unit is concerned, it can be incorporated into the Constitution. Why do you want it to be taken up right now? What about the state language, Bengali? We are prepared to consider one unit with all these things. So, I appeal to my friends on that side to allow the people to give their verdict in any way, in the form of referendum or in the form of plebiscite. On 21 October, the Awami Muslim League <clears throat> dropped the word Muslim from its name as, at a special council meeting to make uh, with the party a truly modern and secular one. Mujib was re-elected General Secretary of the party. Mm. 1956 On the 3rd of February, the Awami League leaders, during a meeting with the Chief Minister, demanded that the subject of provincial autonomy be included in the draft constitution. On the 14th of July, at a meeting, the Awami League adopted a resolution opposing the representation of the military in the administration. The resolution was moved by Mujib. On the 4th of September, an anti-famine procession was brought out under the leadership of Mujib, defying section 144. At least three persons were killed when police opened fire. I believe it's people, but persons were killed when police opened fire on the procession in the Chok Bazaar area. On the 16th of September, he assumed the responsibility of industries, commerce, labor, anti-corruption, and village aid ministry in the coalition government. 1957. On the 30th of May, in response to a resolution of the party, Mujib resigned from the cabinet to strengthen the organization by working full time. From the 24th of June to the 13th of July, he visited China on an official tour. 1958, Pakistan's president, Major, Major General Iskandar Mirza, and the chief of Pakistan's army, General Ayub Khan, imposed martial law on the 7th of October. 